Hello, everyone. It's Jenny and Laurie again of Astropath, and we are here today to talk about the Libra New Moon solar eclipse, which is happening on October 14th at 1.55 p.m. Is that right? Yes. <laughs> and that is Eastern Standard Time. Um, so adjust for your time zone if you um, have a different time zone. So we're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about it in general terms, in uh, you know terms for everyone to listen to, and then we're going to go through each individual sign. You know, as we go through the each individual sign, basically you want to pay most attention to that in regards to your rising sign. You can also listen to the one about your sun sign. You can listen to all of them. <laughs> <laughs> but um, basically it's for your rising sign and your sun sign. Um, and let's see who we are. Jenny Date is of hiddenpathastrology.com. You can find her there. And um, don't miss out on her awesome uh, meditation videos. No, they're just audio files, right? Mm -hmm. They're audio. Yes. Um, listen to them. She does one for each season so there's one available right now on her website for libra season uh they're really quite powerful so pay attention to those um you can find me at lauriefarrington.com or astrolore.org but i'm kind of shifting to lauriefarrington.com so you can find me there and um both of us you can sign up for our our blog posts, our newsletters, all, all that kind of stuff. You can find us on all kinds of social media. There is, will also be on, on Etsy, my uh, monthly new moon workbook, where you can kind of work through some of these things with your own chart. Um, am I missing anything? Anything else? Um. No, let me just say one thing. I am going to be working at the Mystical Market on October 20th for those of you who live in the Burlington, Vermont area. October 20th, Oak Ledge Park, 6 to 10 p.m. Is that That's an it. outside event? Um, I believe so. We'll see. I don't, it's my first time, so I'm very excited, but come visit me there. Give me some free readings um, and a few other things. So I think I might even be in Vermont and show up. Yay. Yay. That would <laughs> me be too. Super That'd fun. be awesome. That would be super cool. fun. So yeah, yeah, I mean, you can also find me on Substack, on Patreon. Patreon's a great place to follow me because you get everything there. You get absolutely everything. You get the workbooks for the season and for the new moon and everything else. So um, yeah, we're both busy out there and we both uh, do teaching and mentoring and um, consultations. So be in touch yeah. with us. Um nice. I think that's all I need to say around all of that. Yeah. Um, and would you talk to us about the phases? Yeah. So I was, yep, that's what I was planning to do. So um, the moon phases, um, just a brief review. Um, this is a new moon. It is also a solar eclipse. Um, so let's just start with the moon phases at a new moon. It's the beginning of the cycle. It's a brand new opportunity. So things are starting all over again. Um, we typically talk about the plant cycle. This is very much like the seed. You plant the seed in the soil. Um, and a week later, you get the half moon. It's a waxing half moon. Um, and then the seed is growing. There's vegetation. You know, the plant's kind of doing its big growth phase. Um, and then when you reach the full moon, it's very much like the flower blooming. So you kind of get to see, oh, wow, look at this beautiful thing that is being produced at this new cycle, you know? And then the whole second half of the cycle is very much about propagation for the future. So, you know, the fruit forms, the seeds get scattered, and then the whole thing goes into compost to provide nutrients for the next cycle. So that's kind of using the plant cycle to explain the moon cycle. <laughs> um, so we are here at a new moon and we have a solar eclipse. So solar eclipses, um, this is when the moon is appearing to block the light of the sun. You know, so it is not visible, I don't think, from the U.S., but it is in other parts of the world. So it symbolizes really like a closing down, like instead of just, hey, we're starting a brand new cycle, we're actually thinking about like, well, wait a minute, how did I close out the last cycle? You know, and it's really interesting this time around because there's this big 
kind of reset theme that we're seeing in this Libra solar eclipse. It has to do with relationships because it's Libra. Um, and then it has this kind of reset feeling. Um, and Lori, I think you've been really talking about it as like a, a karmic reset. So I'd love to hear yeah. more about that. Well, I just, you know, it's it's really interesting because the nodes have just shifted into Aries and Libra. So this is the first, um, the first of the eclipses that is happening in Libra. And for the next 18 months, the eclipses will be in Libra and Aries. And yeah, we, we tend to think of eclipses as a karmic reckoning of some sort. And, you know, whereas, like you were saying, normally with these cycles, we think we're going to plant a seed at the new moon and we make all these plans and we plant this seed. It's different. At, like you said, it's very different with an eclipse. The seed has already been planted. And we talked about a few ways of, of looking at that. And I kind of love the idea of, you know, it's not always our job to plant a seed. It's not always our job. Um, and even if it is our job, maybe we did it a long time ago. You know, it, it, you can just sort of think of this as this seed has already been planted, the seed pod, whatever. I was always think about uh, milkweed pods and how they break open and those seeds just scatter. And we don't have control over how or where or when that seed is planted. So, when it's an eclipse, we can make the assumption that the seed is already in motion. It's already been planted. It's a karmic thing that is occurring. That's how I think about it. Yeah. Yeah. And there's, I think there's always with these uh, solar eclipses, there's, there's definitely more internal focus of like, what things do you need to look at that you need to let go of rather than like running around in the outside world and making all these things happen. I mean, this is a much more sort of yin focus because not only do we have an eclipse, but as you will see, Pluto is involved with this eclipse, it's squaring it. And so that really brings in this whole idea that, you know, we, we think we have control and we don't, you know, I mean, and so part of the theme here is like, where do you need to give up the idea that you have some kind of control and just relinquish and allow what is already being put into motion mm -hmm. to carry on? Because I think, Lori, that's very much what is coming to my mind as you're talking about the seed. It's already been planted. It's scattered. You know, nature has taken its course and that this eclipse kind of brings that symbolism to mind where it isn't your job to you don't get to be in charge of everything the way it neatly goes in the soil like this is a much more wild process and the, the pluto square brings in that real kind of wildness to it and this idea that no, i'm afraid we just don't get control and you have to look at where am i trying to control something and also where is someone else maybe trying to control me so those are some of the themes that we're going to want to get into so yeah yeah, it, it is interesting to think of it as a karmic reset. Mm -hmm. It's like there's some way in which, and because it's Libra, there's some way in which we maybe have been kind of shooting ourselves in the foot by trying to please everybody. And it's time for us to kind of shift that and make a new contract with the people in our lives. I think, you know, Libra is so much about relationship. And I think a lot of this eclipse is really about, um, yeah, resetting an old contract, letting mm. go of something that is not supporting us as we move forward. Because this is the first um, eclipse in Libra, where the eclipses will be between those two lines for the next 18 months. This is really we're looking at things very differently. We're looking at our social contracts. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, and I mean, in our previous two videos, we've done one for Libra season and the Aries full moon. So you might want to take a look at those because it touches on these same themes. And essentially throughout Libra season, we've been looking at, you know, on one hand, like, well, where am I kind of overly dependent in my relationships? You know, kind of asking ourselves, what habits do I have where I automatically rely on others in a way that isn't really so good for me, you know? And then on the other hand, recognizing that the only way we can each individually be independent 
is to have support from others. So kind of needing to look at the other end of relationships of like, well, who supports me in this process of being myself and being independent? So we've kind of had those two themes. And then now at this Libra uh, um, new moon and eclipse, you're kind of wanna, you're looking at those themes you've already investigated and a little bit of having to surrender to the idea like, well, I've already been working on this and you kind of have to surrender to the process at this point. Like you've kind of, you have to trust that the work that you've done is the work that you've needed to do. And if, and if it isn't, there's always this thing around just practicing acceptance and it's not the easiest thing. Nothing's ever perfect and all buttoned up and all complete. Like that is just not the way of life, right? So there's a lot of themes around that, having to trust what you've already done, all about relationships um, mm -hmm. and just being able to sit back a little bit. Yeah. And the, the other thing I want to say about that is that, you know, we have been through over the last, since July, we've been through this incredible Venus retrograde, mm -hmm. Venus rules Libra. I feel like an awful lot of this is sort of pointing at the results of all the work that we've done, all the work we did this summer of reevaluating our own values our own yeah our own values around love around money around beauty around all of those kind of venus themes how have we changed in that and the changes that we've made around our values i think are a huge part of what is allowing us well i think has been a huge part of the seed that's already planted that is in motion Mm -hmm. yeah and so that work is going to support mm -hmm. the necessary change of these social contracts yeah you, I, gosh Lori, when you're saying this it's like there's a ripple effect like you went back the summer and some things came to light and you've had to adjust and change you know and now you've changed and so that ripples into all of your other relationships. And so I think in that way, you can really look at this Libra solar eclipse is exactly what we're saying. This really big opportunity to reset some of these relationships that have now been impacted and have shifted and changed. And you're kind of trying to find your way through it. And there's these funny themes of like looking at where do you please and where do you avoid and where do you try to control things that are beyond your control. And these are all the themes that are kind of getting folded into this, this eclipse, you know? And so there is a lot about letting go and just being like, okay, here's where I am. Where am I? You know, and, and then just proceeding with that new found knowledge and it's, allowing things to transform. It, so. It's such a powerful time. This whole summer has been so powerful. And I, well, I don't know about you, but I feel like it has changed me at a core level that is amazing. It, it's really mm -hmm. amazing. I, I feel, um, yeah, feel like it's all uh, very powerful. Yeah, and it has been pretty personal work too, because Venus is in Leo, and so for oh. everybody on the planet, your sun is in charge of wherever Leo is in your chart, and so no matter what, this has been personal work, yeah. you know. And if you didn't just understand my astrology gobbledygook, I just spewed send me an email, <laughs> but really all of it's about, it is a very personal process for everybody. So it certainly is. Yeah. You no, want to look at the chart yeah. of the moment? Let's look at the Thanks. chart of the moment. And then we will as quickly as possible, we'll move on to the personal impacts. And, um, but right here, we've got the moment of the eclipse, which is actually, I don't know Huh, isn't that funny that I wrote it twice, 155 p.m. <laughs> I guess I wanted to really make that clear. Yeah, but right. um I, is this time 155? Is that actually the time of the new moon or the time of the solar eclipse? Because I know they're not the same. Right. Um, that's a good question because I don't have that at my fingertips, but I will look it up. Here. Um I got I it have, right here. Yeah, because I have it as I think I ha have that as the new moon, but that is a great question because they're subtly different, right? Like it yeah, happens. they are. The actually, yeah. okay. So the new moon is at one fifty-five p.m. Okay. The eclipse itself is actually at one fifty-nine p.m. Okay, so it's like four minutes later. Yeah, got it. Okay, <laughs> let's well, not get too sense. picky here. Um, but it's there you have derby. it. Okay. <laughs> but, so what you'll see um, right there at the top. We got a whole bunch of Libra. We've got the sun and the moon together. Um, you can see that little 
that U that's next to the moon, that is the south node in Libra. So this is a south node solar eclipse, which really emphasizes the need to let go um, in this time. This is, a, this is closing the door to old patterns, making the way for new things to unfold. But the main job is the closing of the door, the releasing of the patterns. That's the main focal point. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Lots of things yeah. going on here. Yeah. And so, you know, some of the things that we talked about when we were looking at this is, first of all, Pluto. Pluto is right there in a square aspect. Um, the the solar eclipse is squaring Pluto. So that that's what brings in the, like, there's a changing of the guard or rather a, um, a releasing of some pattern of dependency in the area of Libra around some relationship issues. There's a releasing of karmic stuff however there's something that's kind of pushing against that change some like you said earlier it's either you trying to control that or somebody trying to control you you know you got to really think this through for yourself it, it's an individual thing um, but there are, is some control dynamic in the mix yeah and it's I think of that because it's a square, it's it's pressure. I mean, I think about a piece of coal being transformed into a diamond. There's this wow. pressure and it's sort of, you know, inexorable. And that is a little bit of the feel of this. So like when you're looking at control issues, you want to look at, you know, A, am I trying to control something? And we'll get more into this in the individual impacts. But B, is there something external from me that I feel is trying to control me? And what is that and identifying it? So that, I mean, that's the main thing is being able to see it because you're going to feel it. And then you want to have a, a little bit of a handle of like, what is it? And that's what we're going to look at more. Yeah, it, And it's interesting. You think about um, Pluto because Pluto is really Pluto's power. Mm. And, you know, we talk about control and yeah, there there is definitely that, but it's also, you know, you can kind of, I feel like you, you can you can think of this as a negative thing. It's trying to stop you, but it's also pushing mm. you to take the action. You know, right. it kind of goes both ways. Yeah. Power is only a problem when we fight against it. We can also use it as a supporting empowerment. Mm -hmm. um, well, yeah. I was just going to comment that it, it's, if you try to turn away from it, you essentially give up your personal power, which is kind of what we're talking about with the Libra dependency, the place where you kind of, you know, you sort of go into pleasing people or you sort of give away a piece of yourself in order to keep something copacetic. And the question really is, is like, is that something that's really unhealthy for you? Because I mean, we have to, there's always compromise. There's always give and take in relationships. The question here is when is it too much where you actually are giving of yourself in a way that is destructive? and gets more into the negativity of Pluto. But ultimately, Pluto is not negative. I mean, using that other example, that's how diamonds get made. You know, the coal gets pressurized and you have this, this amazing prism of a diamond with clear seeing. So you want to recognize that capacity, but it's not it's not lightweight. It's heavyweight. It's it, heavy, you know. It definitely it is. It definitely is. Um, another thing I want to point to is that um several days i don't know a week before i don't i don't have the dates exactly on me at the moment but venus moved into virgo and venus rules this eclipse so it's important to just take a quick look at venus what's going on with venus you know venus was in leo for so long with the retrograde like we talked about earlier we've been through such a process of renegotiating our own values around these venusian kind of issues now venus stepped out of that hot dramatic playfulness of leo and into the neat and tidy space of virgo and it almost immediately when it moved in there opposed saturn this to me really kind of you know if there's a huge struggle in this eclipse for you i think a, a way to manage ourselves in this is you know, go wash the kitchen floor. I don't know, do some, do something on a practical level to, um, I just think, when I think of Venus in Virgo and 
attach it to Saturn. It's like that book. Oh, what was the name of that book? Um, some Buddhist book called Carry Water. You know the book I'm talking about? Oh, and then, like, and then the laundry? Is it Enlightenment and then the laundry or something like that? No, but that's a similar one. No, <laughs> yeah. it was it was more like, um, yeah, Carry Water. I don't know. At any rate, you know, the <laughs> practical skills the practical mm. things make things neat and tidy clean up your space it will make all of these things just work better this this is really you know people get worried when saturn and venus get together like there's a problem but there's also a stabilizing there's an ability to see what's necessary to stabilize the values and i i think yeah just tidy up your space that's going to be helpful. What What's the other thing here that you think is important to look at, Jenny? Oh, well, I was just, um, I was going to comment on the Venus Saturn a little bit more um, before, which is basically just like the idea that, I mean, yeah, people get kind of freaked out maybe by Saturn and Venus, but actually they kind of have an affinity for each other because you need stability. I mean, Saturn is considered to be exalted in Libra. And so, and that's a symbol for saying that you need stability in relationships. Like you need something to kind of be grounded. And I agree with you. Like, I think that this Venus and Virgo is a little bit like when things feel really complicated, just do something really simple and, you know, and, and just be simple. And the other Virgo thing is just like, you know, helping out. Right. So like, if you tie, if you're tidying up your space, you're also tidying up your partner space. Right. So simple to keep yourself you know, grounded during these intense shifts that are happening on this other level. So I think that's great advice, really, Lori, you know? Um, yeah. I mean, as far as other aspects in here, I mean, really, it's just that Chiron is exactly opposite Mercury. I think that's a fascinating yeah. one. I think that's really interesting. It's exact. Yeah. So, I mean, this just brings in, so Chiron is the wounded healer. So everybody comes into this life with some sort of karmic wound they need to deal with. Um, when you deal with that karmic wound, you don't just help yourself, you help everybody. You help other people with that wound. You help the kind of fabric of society have a, a healed place, you know, through your individual life. Um, so I just, I really think having that karmic that, that really makes it more karmic, this idea of like you're healing something old. And what are we healing? Something about the misuse of, of energy, which Aries represents. You know, the over, you know, I am independent. I don't need anybody else. Like bullshit. We all need people, you know. And so there's something in that that is really bringing to the forefront that this whole overall theme of my independent self and then the people who support me, you know, that whole theme is so pronounced. Yeah, and I think the fact that it's exactly opposite Mercury really just suggests the importance while we're tidying up our space to be having the conversations that have to be had. You know, there's something in that that deep internal karmic wound that really will support your process when you talk about it, you know? Mm -hmm open up some conversations that go into deep places. Don't just, you know, I mean, obviously pay attention to who you're opening those conversations with. You don't want to just uh, lay it on anybody, but um, th there's a necessity to bring your voice to this whole process. Yeah. And, and as you're saying, Lori, like just how much courage that takes, like give yourself, you know, do give yourself some credit for having the courage to do it. I mean, that's the, the Aries part, you know, the willingness to speak because the other, the danger, one of the dangers of Libra is to just totally avoid the whole situation. Like, Oh, I don't want any conflict. I don't want to step on anyone's toes, you know, and all that kind of stuff. And with the South node there, there's a pull to just avoid the whole thing. And I think that this is a symbol for saying, don't necessarily do the easy thing. Don't do the avoidant thing, because if you do, I think it, it can be actually more volatile. Yeah. If you just turn to, as you're saying, Lori, turn and face it and go, gosh, I, I've got to have this conversation. It's uncomfortable. And I can think about exactly where in my life this is, Lori, <laughs> um, of like where you just need to kind of do that and kind of muster the courage. So I think that that is a big theme, too. So I'm glad you brought that up. Yeah. yeah, well, I think um, I think that's everything on the chart itself. Do you think there's, is there anything else you want to cover? 
Well, there's like 10 other things, but let's not. <laughs> oh, yeah. The fact that Mars just moved into Scorpio. Well, we'll we'll leave that oh, now. Yeah. And Mars squaring. Yeah, we don't need to talk about all of that. I but, well, I will. Let's just mention one thing that, <laughs> yes, coming into this. See, you did it now, Lori. You've done it. But coming into <laughs> the solar eclipse, there's a really intense week before it. And actually, the day that Venus moved into Virgo, which is October 8th, is oh. also the day that Mars squared Pluto. So by the time this thing hits you're going to be very clear about whatever the issue is because it's very likely that it is going to become very apparent uh, october 8th and then the week following what's going on so yeah that's what i want interesting times it, very yeah. interesting times i think i i just really love it when the nodes change signs when they change you know, for the past year and a half, they've been in what Scorpio and Taurus, and now they're basically in um, Aries and and Libra, and it's that's quite a shift. We've got one more one more Taurus eclipse um, coming up, which incidentally is also ruled by Venus. Um, yeah, okay. yeah, you for, actually did forget to give those dates that this is a new moon, so we've got two full moons coming from this. So the first one is the one that's coming up, which is October 28th. And that one's um, a lunar eclipse in Taurus, ruled by Venus. And then in six months at March 25th, we're gonna have a lunar eclipse in Libra. So Venus is very, very important. Our relationships, our values, our dealings with money, all very prominent and gonna continue to be so, so. Okay. I okay. think we are ready to move on. Hang on a second. Okay, so let's move on and talk about, let's see here. Let's talk about those of you with Aries rising. Do you want to start this one, Jenny? Sure, let's give it a stab. Okay, Aries rising, this uh, Libra new moon solar eclipse quite a mouthful, is happening in your seventh house. And now by now, Aries rising, you probably are pretty clear what relationship is in the hot seat for you. Um, it's very likely in the seventh house, this is going to be your primary partnership, um, a marriage a spouse, you know, it could also be a business partnership. Um, and it really does refer to any other one-on-one um, -on -one relationships where you're really in those, those types of situations. So that's where the attention has been for a while. Um, and again, remember, like, this is a big opportunity to reset how you do this relationship. You know, so by now, ideally, you've kind of been working with the stuff for the last few weeks. You've kind of looked at, geez, where do I kind of give away my power? Where am I like pleasing this relationship in a way that isn't really healthy for me, you know? And then on the other hand, you know, are there issues that you're kind of avoiding that you don't really want to bring up because they are, you know, wound up and tense, you know? So those are some of the themes that you're going to be thinking about here. Um, I, I mean, that's kind of the, the, the big note here. So yeah. What do you want to add? Well, yeah. People with Aries rising, it's really very simple. It's a major relationship that um, your tendency has been that trying to please, which is funny. I mean, Aries rising is all, I'm determined and strong. And, but when it comes to relationship, you really have that tendency to please others. So this is a uh, karmic reset of some primary relationship in your life. I, I think it's really as simple as that. And it would be all too easy for you know, somebody to say to you or for you to think to yourself, oh, well, that means I have to get rid of my partner. No, you don't. You know, I mean, maybe you do. You probably are pretty clear if you're in a toxic relationship that, yes, this is a time that is an opportunity for you to move forward and let that relationship go. However, most most of you listening to this probably, you know, there's some part of that contract you have with that person that needs to change mm -hmm. you know yeah. it doesn't mean the whole relationship has to change but it it's really time for you to look at what is the contract i have with this partner you know what is the assumed contract the written contract there's something in that that needs to be released in order to make it a healthier space uh 
a more fair, you know, it's sort of like wherever this Libra is right now with this eclipse, you need to get things fair. You know, you're looking for fairness here. Yeah, and I was thinking, then, yeah. Go ahead. I, I was just going to, yeah. I mean, just the idea of like what you're aiming for is more balance. You know, for you to feel balanced in your partnership where you both have a voice, you both have some sense of equality. I mean, that's really what you're trying to lift into, you know, the higher thing. And it really does require inner review, like the inner look. This isn't, like you said, Lori, this isn't about necessarily you know, getting rid of a relationship, it's like getting clear about how you've changed. And then now how can you incorporate that into your relationship? Right. How so. have your values in relationship changed, creating an opportunity for you to change the contract? Yeah. And the difficulty with Pluto squaring this from the 10th house somehow comes from your career or your reputation, there's some powerful force in that area of career or reputation that maybe is somehow connected to this changing contract. Yeah, I was thinking it, to me, it's like, there's pressures at work, you know, like you might be in a situation where both partners work, very likely. Um, there's pressures coming at you from work. You're trying to figure out how to incorporate those into your partnership. And the thing is, is you have probably have, you know, the whole control issue. You don't have control in that 10th house. I mean, you have the job, you have to deal with some of the authority figures that are demanding things from you. That could be one angle, you know, or it could be that you're putting too much effort into your career and your part, you know, your partner mm -hmm. suffering. Like there's some interplay between the two things. And I don't think it takes a big reach of imagination to be like, oh yeah, like I, I totally get it. Like it's this, this, cause work and your partner, I mean, God, these are huge topics in our lives, major they're, topics. They're always kind of in conflict. Yeah, totally. <laughs> you know, so you spend too much time at work or go get a job or, <laughs> yeah. you know, there's so many ways that that, that can play out. And, you know, now um, Pluto's about ready to go direct and it's not going to be in that 10th house that much longer as far as, you know, the length of time Pluto spends in a house. At any rate, that's another conversation. But yeah, there's some dynamic there that you want to just kind of watch it, pay attention to it. Um, the bottom line, your contract with your partner is changing. Don't fight against it. Just find balance. Do the work. Yeah. Do the work. Okay. All right. Let's yeah. move on then to uh, folks who have Taurus rising. So this puts the solar eclipse in your sixth house. So First of all, sixth house really relates to your day-to-day -day routines that support your health. Given that this is where Libra is, and there's a lot of focus here on a, um, a kind of a relationship contract being changed, you want to think about the relationships that are involved in your day-to-day -day routines that support your health. So this could be your healthcare team, doctors, you might have uh, health issues that you're dealing with. Um, this could be a, a therapist, a doctor, a um, someone who leads your yoga classes. I don't know. I, I don't know <laughs> what that might be, but those relationships, those kind of relationships are under review to release something to change the contract with those relationships. It may be, you know, just a change of your own contract with your body. Mm. Mm -hmm. You know, you may have been on a specific dietary regime for the past X number of years and you are suddenly realizing, I have to stop having that pattern and change it to something else there's some some contract in how you care for your body that's mm. up for a mm -hmm. karmic reevaluation and change yeah you know and it's i think it's also helpful to have more understanding about this too is to think about the libra traits you know and some of the libra traits are 
Um, we were asking that question earlier on in the Libra season of like, are you trying to please somebody? Is there a way that you're, you know, trying to work into the over-pleasing realm here with Libra? Um, it might be more likely though, because we're talking about routines and stuff, it might be something that you're avoiding. Because I mean, Libra, Libra doesn't want conflict. Re Libra wants everything to be like copacetic and balanced and, you know, pretty. Um, and there might be just something here that you are tempted to avoid, um, especially with our health issues. You know, as we age, it's like, oh man, I don't want to, I don't want to look at that. I'm going to ignore that little pain and it's just going to go away. So there's something about like just asking yourself, am I, am I working to please too much or am I avoiding something here that I really need to look at? Because really what you're trying to do with this solar eclipse is kind of clear the decks so that you can reset the relationship and have it be more equal, you know? So, cause the other end of it could be um, if you're overdoing something, right? I guess that's kind of the pleasing part. Are you overdoing your exercise routine? Are you, is it too much? So these are kind of the, the things you want to look at and use those Libra keywords to help you understand yeah. like, what's going on. Well, one way, as you were talking, I was thinking about, um, you know, pleasing someone else, pleasing others with your routines. Maybe you're, um, maybe you cook for your family every night and the pattern has always been that you cook meat for dinner every night and you may have suddenly um, had some epiphany, some worldview that you want to become a vegetarian. And there's a pressure from that to the change that you need to make. On the other hand, maybe you've been a vegetarian forever. And maybe that's because your partner's a vegetarian. And all of a sudden, it's like your worldview is like, I don't need to do that anymore. I want to go eat a cow. <laughs> Excuse me. Um, yeah. But there, there's some way that your worldview is impacting these changes that need to be made around how you care for your body. You know, we talked earlier, this could have something to do with the COVID vaccines and worldview. I mean, that would be a, a very um, easy way for that to play out as far as the Pluto coming from the ninth house of the worldview. Yeah, it is interesting. I mean, it is, Think I like how um, you can think of this as like, what pressure is being exerted from the worldview that you already have? I mean, it's, but there's something about that ninth house that's really about experiences where Pluto, so this is stuff beyond your control. Maybe you, you know, went on a trip, like you kind of said, and just like, you learned something totally different that you had no idea and now that new way of viewing things is putting pressure on your typical routines now that you've come back home and you've gone back to work and you're doing all your routines, you know? So there's something about that because the the control issue is around like, you know, don't fight that. Like if you had a new experience, like just be open to it and let it change you. I mean, it's something like that, you know, at the same time, the control issue could be something coming at you from the outside. So there might be a way in which your worldview is being controlled by something that you haven't been able to quite see. Mm -hmm. And maybe you're starting to see that now. And this kind of ties in, you could go either way with the whole people's various mm -hmm. drawers about vaccines. Yeah. Um, you can think about that. It, it's not about having a, a viewpoint one way or the other, but what it is about is you personally, Taurus rising, thinking about how that lands in your life, you know, and where, you know, what is going on with that overall thing. So, yeah. 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 Your own under, yeah. yeah. I, I just think about conspiracy theories. <laughs> you know, there's yeah. so many ways that this can play out in today's yeah. world with, there's so many ways that could play out. I just yeah. went down a whole rabbit hole <laughs> with my brain here. <laughs> The key um, is your critical thinking, though, because yeah. nine times is also your critical thinking. So it's up to you to kind of yeah. see where you fall on that and what you want to do with this eclipse to have and, a written contract. You, you know, know, if if you have a story to tell about this, leave it in the notes. We would love to hear some of these stories. How does this play out for you? Share with us. We'd love to hear it. OK, um, and we do try to respond to all the messages. OK. Let's move on to uh, those of you with Gemini rising. Ooh la la. <laughs> Ooh la la. Okay. So Gemini rising, this brings this whole solar eclipse into your fifth house. We've talked about this area of life um, in, the, in our previous two videos, if you've seen those. This is the area of 
like one keyword would be creativity. That place where you just give of yourself, you immerse yourself in something and you're just pouring your unconditional love into it. You know, so another way of thinking about this is children. For those of you with children or who have children in your life, even if they're not your own, this is that unbridled kind of love that you feel, you know? And so there is a uh, real question here in your fifth house. Like think about your creative processes, the way that you give of yourself. And then think about the relationships involved. You know, so those of you who are listening, like, you know what this is. Like, this might be some creative pursuit you've been doing. Um, and you have these people in your life who support you, you know, or there's also a way in which you might be kind of have given away your, your power, like given away your creative power somehow. Maybe those, I think you said something earlier, Lori, about having like your artistic partners, you know, and how do they play into this whole, you know, business of like how you're conducting yourself, you know, are you pleasing or are you um, overdoing something in some way? So that's kind of what it brings up. Yeah. Uh, yeah. If you want well, to I, I'm thinking about, you know, how do you use your creativity mm -hmm. to please others? You know, I, I think <laughs> with this, I'm thinking about like, if you have children, um, maybe this, you know, the way you're raising children may that contract with those children and how you're raising them needs to be reworked. There's some contract between you and a love affair, how you give love, those people that you give love to, you have a contract, but that contract is up for a major review and a change. You have to release something. I'm thinking, you know, I keep looking at that Pluto up there yeah. in the eighth house, pushing against it. And for some reason, the conversation or the picture that comes into my mind is, you know, you raise your children in a particular way to please your partner, mm. you know, because you're normally raising children with a partner. But you, you know that there's some way that their beliefs of how things should be done is pushing against your understanding around how you, you want to be with your children. I don't know if I went out on a total limb or if that even made sense, but th there's some way that this contract of how you give love needs to be reworked. There's some part of that contract that needs to be released in order to move forward. You know, I was also thinking about pleasing others with your artwork, with your, you know, maybe you paint beautiful pictures, but you'd really rather paint something darker, but you're worried <laughs> about how well, it's going to be received. Yeah. I mean, I think that this, what this brings up for me is like the creative process. I mean, it can be anything artistic. It can be music. Um, it can be any of those things, but I, I'm bringing up music because how many times have you heard about a music band and this major tension between two of the players, you know, like John and Paul and the Beatles, you know, or like um, Peter Townsend and Roger Dolphrey and the Who, like there's always this, because there's this intensity around your creative thing that you're doing. And then what is happening in that eighth house with Pluto there? It's other people's values. It's what other people want. And meanwhile, you're there doing your creative process and you kind of have this tendency as a Gemini rising to sort of please the other people here, you know? And so there's something about needing to just kind of say, you know what? I need to reset this contract and I need to be able to, you know, make beautiful things and do it in balance with these other people. Like that's what we're, you know, aiming for, you know? And there's something about the, the Pluto in the eighth house. This is not your control. You can't control what other people think and believe and feel. All you can do is figure out what your boundaries are, you know? And that's really the query here for you with Gemini Rising is what, what is that? What are those boundaries? What do you need to do? Yeah. And you, you know, if you're listening to this, you know what relationships or or what the issue is. And it's yeah. probably, yeah, children, love affairs, or someone that you give love to, or it could be your creative process itself that needs to be really, um, really more authentic for you. And something about the contract you've been under needs to be tossed out in order to really 
get to the authentic place that it needs to be. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I think that that should do it. Um, so we're going to move on to those with cancer rising. So if you have cancer rising, the Libra solar eclipse is happening in your fourth house. Um, because we're talking about Libra, we're looking at, in large part, we're looking at relationships. And the fourth house is home, family. So basically there's some contract that you've been working with some karmic contract with family members, whether it be um, your family of origin, whether it be your ancestral line, whether it be the people that you share a space with in current time, there is some karmic contract that needs to change. Mm. Some part of that contract that needs to be removed in order to move forward. Mm -hmm. So think about that, get clear about what that relationship is, look at your own tendency to kind of tie yourself up in knots to please these people. And that's the part that needs to be removed is your own tendency. You know, don't throw the baby out with the bathwater. You're not trying to get rid of these family members. You're trying to get rid of your own propensity to over please mm -hmm. yeah because i think you know all through libra season there's been this great opportunity to look at these relationships and in your case cancer rising these are family relationships so like you're saying laura you know is there a place where you're trying to please the family relationships it's very typical you know how can we not do that right you know and then the other issue is there's also sticky thorny issues to do with family of origin and so on and it might be that you want to avoid <laughs> and not get into it um and really what you want to do here is to witness what's going on and then aim for balance like where you're trying to figure out boy i've changed a lot in the last few months now how can i incorporate that into my family relationships because there's a ripple effect so there's something about that you know and in the meantime, there's this other subplot with um, Pluto bringing up control issues in your partnership. So there's also a storyline here that ties into everything about how you are either trying to control something your partner's doing in, you know, in dealing with this home and family stuff, or that you're allowing yourself to be controlled, you know, by by something. So you want to, and and here's the fact. You don't have control <laughs> over any of those things. So there's kind of this need to go, okay, like what am I doing and how am I doing it? And take the the uh, sort of witness stance and watch what's going on in your life um, and then see what needs to go into this contract reset. Because it's really a great opportunity. Yeah, it really well, is. Yeah, it really is. I, I think this, this Libra new moon solar eclipse is a huge opportunity. Yeah, it's it's resetting an old karmic contract that's not working anymore. And if you feel yourself being pushed by that relationship in a way that's uh, negative, I love how you're talking about it as yeah, taking that that position as the witness. Mm. You're not planting a seed. You're watching what's going to grow out of this reset. Yeah, the reset's going to happen. That's what, yeah, <laughs> that's what the eclipse is about. The reset is happening. Wild. <laughs> Fascinating, isn't yeah. it? Okay. Yeah. So let's, <laughs> let's move on to um, people with Leo rising. Yeah. So with Leo rising, uh, this whole solar eclipse business is happening in your third house. Um, so third house is all about communication. That's the bottom line, everything communication. So this is how you speak how you use your voice, but this is also how you find yourself in the struggle with siblings. There's always like a sibling component here. Um, other things that might be going on in your life and Leo rising, you're gonna know which one this is. You know, it also could pertain to um, neighbor issues uh, and, and then also just anything to do with, you know, writing or speaking the way you communicate, there's other things. So think about what relationship we're talking about here or relationships because I think you're just going to know because you've been focusing on it for weeks now, you know, um, and what we're looking at is a really a great opportunity for a reset, 
you know, there's a karmic way of being that you've always done it a certain way in your life. And now you have an opportunity to do it really differently because there's been a lot of growth and change in the last couple of months. And it has an effect on all of your relationships. So that's kind of what you're going to want to look at. Like, you know, when you're thinking about this, like ask yourself, is there a way that you work too hard to please somebody, you know, a sibling or something to do with your communication? Mm -hmm. um, and on the other hand, is there something that you just really want to avoid that you're just trying to escape? Um, those are kind of two ways of looking at how am I working with this energy? Because what you really want to do is strike the balance and aim for this kind of middle stance where you get to watch and get more balance in your life. That's what you're overall looking at. Yeah. So, yeah, <laughs> it, it's interesting just thinking about that, that third house and having Libra there. It's like, you know, you probably... As a child, if you have siblings, you probably spend a lot of time trying to keep everybody happy, right? You you try your best to keep your neighbors happy. You try your best to communicate in such a way that it is pleasing to anyone you're, you're communicating with, right? There's that tendency to want to use your voice to please others. And that can that can be great but it can also go beyond what's great and, and be actually harmful to yourself. And I, I think I love thinking about neighbors here for some reason. <laughs> I like thinking about neighbors with this, this tendency to want to please. And yet they're like pounding around on the floor above your, you know, your upstairs neighbors, they're pounding around and it's driving you crazy. So you don't have control over that. You can't go upstairs and say, every time you come into your apartment, you have to take those big boots off. You know, you, you can't have that kind of control over your neighbors. You can't, yeah, you just have to change the contract that you have. Let go, you know, maybe it's time to move if those neighbors are really a problem. If the siblings are really a problem, and they're creating problems for you, maybe maybe it's time to remove them from your life or maybe it's just time to rewrite the contract. But you've got to get clear. What's the contract that's under review here? What's the karmic component of it? And what parts of it need to be thrown out in order to develop more fairness and balance in those relationships? Yeah. Yeah. And the, the other piece you, you started, um, you did allude to just that idea of the big booted neighbor, like tromping around on your head. But the, I, the, the Pluto symbol here in your sixth house is really symbolizing something to do with control. So either something that you want to control and you really can't control or some way that control is coming from outside of you that you haven't noticed before you're not in tune with. So now is the time to get clear. What is that? control issue you know is it is it you trying to control over control the environment you know or or try to control i don't know even a sibling through your routines like you know practicing some sort of avoidance in you know with i mean there's, there's all these different ways it can play out in your life and so each of you just need to ask yourself what what is the thing that's going on and what is what Lori and i are talking about here what does it jog in your mind of where the work is for you, like where the need is to just step back and accept, wow, th this process has been in play for months. Um, I don't have full control. I mean, possibly even years, you know, and just saying this is where I'm at. And then what do I need things to be? How does the contract need to be a bit different? Like, what do I bring to it? Yeah. So. Yeah, absolutely. That sounds good. Let's move on then to those of you with Virgo rising. Now, if you've got Virgo rising, this is this eclipse is happening in your second house. And um, in the second house, you know, we can think about relationships because it's Libra. We've been thinking about this in um, large part as resetting social contracts with the people involved in the house that this is occurring in. So the second house yeah, there might be some people involved in there, your financial advisors or, you know, things like that. But in general, I think this is really just talking about your relationship to money and your own self-worth. Money and self-worth are so tied together. And I, I think it's really important 
important to understand that connection. Now, with Libra here, what has been your social contract around money and self-worth? Well, it, it could play out in, in many different ways, I'm sure. But what comes to my mind is, oh, I need a partner in order to be financially safe. Or um, I need to please people with, if, if I have money, I better use it to please everybody around me. You know, those are two internal contracts that you might have around how you work with your own money. Well, at this time, it's really important that you understand that this contract, which is a very old karmic contract, because this is an eclipse, this, you really need to rewrite that contract. There's some parts of it that need to go in the trash so that you can set up and develop a new contract. Mm -hmm. Maybe you really can share your resources without feeling dependent on someone else's or without feeling like you have to please someone else with your resources. So yeah, there, there's a contract there around your money resources and self-worth that is um, up for a karmic reset. Yeah. And I mean, another thing, you know, just to add to that picture, another behavior, if you will, that's associated with Libra when it's out of balance is avoidance, you know, mm -hmm. so this also could be a place where you're just like, Ooh, I really just don't want to look at that. It's too much. I can't handle it. You know, and, but the reality here is that it's going to be very fruitful if you can face and work with it, like avoiding it is actually just making the monster in the room even bigger. You know, so there's something about like, you know, if that's your behavior pattern, you know, recognize that, you know, um, because the other subplot that Lori and I have put on these charts is Pluto and, and Pluto is in your fifth house with Virgo rising. And so that it sort of indicates some kind of control issue in the fifth house, like either a way that if you go out and you do these certain things that it's going to, you know, impact your money in a certain way, you know, or there's a way in which you know, it could be that somebody else is trying to control you so that you keep doing your money and stuff in the same old way, even though you really need a change. You know, mm. so the, the question you want to ask is that about control. Is there something you're trying to overdo and control or is there possibly somebody else in your life that is trying to control you and get, you know, into your finances or whatever it is, you know, like, so that's kind of a, it's an interesting little wild card that's tucked away in this chart that really brings the whole karmic issue, like right to the forefront. Is this an old thing you've been dealing with for a long time? Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. <laughs> yeah. I'm just thinking about that, the, the power of Pluto being in that fifth house, pushing against that, that, change of the storyline of the karmic pattern mm -hmm. yeah how how is that pushing so anyone who's listening to this with virgo rising if you have a story to tell about how this plays out in your own life please share it in the comments we would we would love to hear what you have to say and we do try to respond to any comments that are made so that would be great if you would do that yeah. okay so let's move on to folks who have Libra rising. Okay, with Libra rising, I mean, this is just about how you relate to yourself. <laughs> I mean, in a nutshell, you have this solar eclipse happening in your first house. So this is a way that you need to renew your contract with yourself, how you carry yourself about the world. You know, there's something, um, there's been a lot of change in the last few months with the Venus retrograde and then all through Libra season, there's been this real question of how you relate to other people and with Libra rising the things you really want to get clear about um are you a people pleaser you know are you somebody who constantly gives yourself away in the effort to please other people because that could very much be an identity with Libra rising so that that's one thing you want to think about 
Um, another thing you want to think about is like, are there things about yourself that you're trying to avoid, you know, habits that you kind of know that you do, but you don't really want to deal with them. So you keep trying to sweep them under the rug because Libra can be avoidant. So you want to just look those things squarely in the face, you know, and think about what kind of, or what you can do to have an even more authentic relationship with yourself. Mm -hmm. I mean, that is really the main plot for those of you with Libra rising. So, yeah, it really is. It's like, what is your karmic contract with yourself that you've been living under and what part of it do you need to get rid of? And I, I think it's really clear, you know, what you need to get rid of if you've got Libra rising is this tendency to over please, you mm. know, you show up and you want to please everybody. Well, <laughs> you know, you can do that to the detriment of yourself. And this is very much, you know, resetting that contract, demanding for yourself that, yeah, that you take care of yourself first. Sorry, even if you've got Libra rising, bottom line, well, look for Venus in your own chart, but that, that's another story altogether. You <laughs> really need to rewrite that contract by getting rid of some of that tendency to over please and not, you know, yeah not taking care of yourself first. And, yeah. and then we've got Pluto there in the fourth house. And this, to me, this just feels so simple. It's like, you're, you're trying to rewrite this contract with yourself to stop pleasing everybody in the world. And there's some power dynamic from your family saying, wait, wait, no, your job is to please us. Mm. Yeah. I, I think it's to really work with that. Yeah, I, I, I agree with you. I think it's, it is pretty simple. Um, the only thing I'll add to it is just simply, you know, Pluto's kind of representing control issues here. Like in either, and like you just said, your family trying to control the narrative of who you are is the most likely representation. Um, it also could represent a way in which that works in reverse where you're trying to control something about your family because you're trying to change something about yourself. So you're trying to do it through your family. And then it's like, nope, just do it through yourself. You know, like relinquish control. You do not, you can't control that family narrative. Um, and, you know, we could have a whole storyline here about setting boundaries if it's in reverse, you know, but um, we can talk about that at the next uh, lunar eclipse because it's going to land in your eighth house Libra rising. So another conversation, but anyway, another conversation. <laughs> Absolutely. Right? That's fascinating. I mean, that one just seems so, so clear. Okay. Yeah. So let's move on then to folks who have Scorpio rising. Okay. Mm -hmm. So if you've got Scorpio rising, this eclipse falls in your 12th house. Well, <laughs> how do you Okay, so the focus is the 12th house. 12th house is your unconscious emotional patterns, your unconscious mental pattern, your unconscious patterns. Um, and also that can be your spiritual understanding. So there's some way in which you have, a, have been living under a particular karmic contract with how you work with those patterns some expectations of maybe avoidance. Like I love that you keep bringing up Jenny, that Libra, Libra wants to please. And part of, part of Libra's wanting to please is to avoid the difficulties that come when you're not busy pleasing everybody, right? Mm -hmm. So, you know, really thinking about how you change that contract with yourself in a way that instead of avoiding some of those hidden patterns that may be difficult to look at, that you change that contract so that you are paying attention and looking at them. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, it's hard to think about because a lot of how we keep talking about this is the relationships involved in, in the house itself. And I think in this case, it's really just your relationship to your unconscious. Yeah, I think I, I mean, I, I agree. There might be some extraneous individuals involved, but but really 
it is that, I, I mean, the 12th house, it's right next to the first house. So it is the hidden stuff that supports the, the first house, which is the self. So it definitely, I, I agree. I think, you know, you've got these subconscious or unconscious patterns, these like, you know, trip ups and all through huh. Libra season, it's been looking at that, like really just dependency period, it, rather than dependency to particular people, right? There's, there's one other way that it could be other people or another person mm -hmm. would be if you have a hidden relationship. Mm. Because the 12th house often can bring in, you know, the tendency to have a hidden, you know, so if you are, as an example, if you're a married person and are having an affair, <laughs> that could be a 12th house relationship. No, that's true. Hidden from the public eye. Yep. Hidden from the public eye. So if you have a relationship of that nature, then you're definitely would be looking at resetting a karmic pattern in that relationship. Hmm. Yeah. I mean, this is, I mean, this is a deep seated issue for yeah. Scorpio rising. I mean, Scorpio rising, your whole path is about depth. Let's be real. But then you've got this whole solar eclipse happening in your 12th house right now. Like this is a reckoning of, I, I, I think you're right in the sense of like, whatever the contract that you have about what is hidden from view and what is public, you know, and that's going to play out, you know, whoever's listening to this, like think for yourself, like what are these more tucked away issues that, I mean, they're hard to get at and explain, but I think it's really important. What you're really going for here is a bit more balance mm -hmm. where this isn't quite so in shadow, you know, and yet isn't dominating everything about your life. This is just how you work with these patterns and, try to have that in balance, you know, because the other thing we haven't quite talked about yet with this one is the Pluto presence, right. you know, and Pluto being down in that third house, there's some kind of, I mean, the first thing I, I want to say here is this right away brings up the idea of trying to control the narrative. You're controlling this story and you're, you know, and whatever, like kind of in your affair potential possibility, it's, you know, controlling the story by how you don't by omission you're not going to talk about your affair you know like with anybody or very very few people maybe a close friend or sibling but it brings in that um well yeah and thing. you know with that it, it, if we're going to keep to that that idea of the hidden relationship <laughs> maybe a conversation that you have no control over opens the opens up the awareness and yeah. the relationship's no longer hidden because you had no control over some conversation yeah. that opened that up. Yeah, and all of this <laughs> would be about your growth. This is not like, so if you were are that person, why? Why are you having the fear? What has happened? Are you just not monogamous? Is there something that's happened? And so even if that's not your story at all and you're not having an affair, you're just an innocent Scorpio rising listening to this <laughs> video, the big question really is about your own subconscious patterns and the ways in which you tend to give up bits of yourself and thereby lose some of your personal power, you know, and because it's in the 12th house, it's hard to see, it's hard to know, you know, but there's usually a surface thing. I mean, the biggest thing I have kept thinking about this with is the idea of addiction. You know, if you've got, um, yes. you know, addiction, yeah. whether it's, you know, smoking cigarettes or, you know, or even a, um, a religion behavior or something, you know, it doesn't have to be a substance, but just what are the addictive behaviors? Because, and this is a really important time to redo it, right? To have a new contract. Yeah. Yeah. I'm so glad you brought that up, Jenny, because I think there is a lot of possibility here for this being for Scorpio rising, some hidden, yeah, some hidden pattern, some hidden, whether it's an addiction, whether it's just a habitual, I watch Netflix for two hours every evening and I really yeah. don't feel great about that. It's not, but yeah, there's some karmic um, necessity to change a hidden pattern that's sort of been hidden from yourself. Yeah. And you have the illusion that you can control it by maybe lying about it, right? Because Pluto's in the third house. Like there's an illusion that you're in charge of your pattern because you've hidden it, you right. know? And that's the thing you want to recognize. Like you don't actually have that control. You might think that you do, but you don't. And that, and that is the piece where it's like sooner or later, there's a reckoning 
you know, and then the question becomes, do you want to embrace that reckoning for your personal growth or do you want it more to implode? You know, so I think that that's really, really what this kind of brings up. Yeah. So it's resetting your karmic contract with the way you work with your own internal patterns. And um, right. So I hope those of you with Scorpio rising don't feel like we've picked on you too much. Um, I really would encourage you if you have some story, if you know what, how this relates in your own life, I would love it if you would just leave a comment below. We would love to hear from you, hear how this is playing out for you and how you're working with these things. Um, That would be great. Now we're going to move on to those of you with Sagittarius rising. So Sagittarius rising, there's been a big query here for you for the last few weeks, at least about your community, you know, a question around who really supports you, like how, Mm -hmm. like in terms of community groups, you know, this is not individual support. This is how your community supports you. And it's, you know, this has been a really important time to kind of look at you know, this idea, like, are you like trying to please people in your community in a way that isn't really good for you? You know, that would be one version. Um, another version would be just kind of like, just trying to avoid community altogether, because you're just nervous about the fact that you're afraid nobody's going to support you, you know, so there's kind of an avoidance thing that can happen with Libra. Um, so those are kind of the like the heavier end of like, you know, what is going on with your community, you know, because you really have this opportunity to have a totally different social contract right now. I mean, that's really what the solar eclipse represents is this idea that like you've changed over the last few months. You've gotten an idea of something different and now you want a different contract, you know, and while you don't get to be in charge of all the details you at least know that you're showing up as a different, a a kind of a more expanded version of yourself through all the growth you've been through recently. So that's kind of what this in general symbolizes. So, yeah, it's, it's great to think about just throughout the whole summer with the Venus retrograde, how much your values have changed and what you need and want and need to receive from community has changed so um yeah you're resetting oh dear my cat's gone crazy again (laughs) (laughs) he was sleeping he was so good now all of a sudden he's gone crazy but uh yeah how do you what is the new contract that you want that you need regarding the community that supports you you know you might need a whole new contract around the community that supports you because you have a whole new set of um your own what you want for your future you know that community of the 11th house is the community that supports you to your desires so if your desires have changed then you need to rewrite the contract and that's what this this eclipse is really about um, navigating a new karmic contract with community. Oh God. Well, yeah, it's, it is really interesting though. Like just to think about what you're really going for here, Sagittarius rising is balance. You want to feel a sense of balance in your community where it feels good. And it feels like there's a sort of equitable, support that's happening and so that's really ultimately what what you want your new contract to result in you know um but it's interesting because it kind of brings up the side note we have put pluto on these charts pluto um represents a place where you need to recognize that you don't have any control you know and there's some kind of control thing here and in your case sagittarius rising that is in your second house of self-worth Um, And also money, you know, comes into play there. So there's some way in which an issue with money or the resources you think that you bring or have is kind of, you know, causing pressure in the situation about the community that you desire. You know, there's an interplay between those things. And it might be that you just think like, oh, I can't 
socialize with those people. I can't go there. I don't have, I don't have the right financial status. Like I'm not like them. I don't fit into Mm -hmm. that community. And like, that might not be true at all. Like you might bring a very valid perspective. So, you know, you don't want to like try to get too controlling about this whole money and resources idea, you know, and, and by the, by the same token, you know, if you feel like you're being sort of rejected because you don't fit into that social class, like that's not the community for you, you know? So th- there's that piece, but what you, what I do know is you don't get to control that piece. You just get to witness it and see how it plays in. Yeah. And with that Pluto in the second house, it, it might show up. Yeah. I like that you said that it's just it, the community that you're looking at, you might not feel like you fit in. Hmm. Yeah. It's not necessarily money. Um, but somewhere your self-esteem doesn't feel like it fits with that community in some way. Yeah. There's yeah. some some stress from that area, from your own self-worth in fitting in. Yeah, and it's almost like you can't control like people's opinion or whatever. So just don't you can't the message here is to not worry about that part of it. You know, to really focus on what is the contract that you want, because that's where the work is. That's where the solar eclipse is saying, hey, here's where the opportunity is, like, you know, to kind of close this door on old stuff and be open to a new way of doing it. Yeah. So to pay attention. Power. Look at what is what does community mean to you currently? What who are the people? And when we talk about community, it's not your best friends. It's, you know, it is the people kind of like minded people that support you to what you desire. So you want to really get clear what is that community and what's the social contract you've been existing under regarding that community. Toss that contract out, write a new one. And that may involve, yeah, a whole new community, or it may involve a new contract with an old community. Yeah. Either way. Either okay. way, you gotta let go of something. <laughs> Gotta let go of something. Eclipses are always a requirement to let go of something. So if if any of this speaks to you and you've got a story to tell, leave a note in, in the comments. We would love to hear from you. So now we're going to move on to those of you that have Capricorn rising. So for people with Capricorn rising, it's so funny. Capricorn rising, the fact that Libra's on the on the in the tenth house is so interesting to me because the tenth house is so much about, you know, career and kind of authority type figures. That's what you would really be looking at here is um a re a, a moment to re-navigate and reset karmic contracts with people um in within your career, maybe a boss or people in authority positions. And given that you you are the authority with that Capricorn rising, it's always a, a interesting little mix here to me. But get clear, you know, if you're listening to us, you probably know exactly what relationship is up for a karmic review. You probably know what it is. And it's probably a boss, someone who has some position um, of authority over your work in the world or your reputation in the world. Um, So that's what we're really looking at here. Right, Jenny? Yeah. You know, I mean, it's with Capricorn rising, it's like you've got um, cardinal signs on angular houses. So this is very much about the basics of, you know, your profession and your sense of self, you know, and that's what's at play here. I think you had said something earlier about, you know, yeah, and, and you just mentioned it too, that as a Capricorn rising, like your whole thing is about being the authority. And so there might be some way in which you have grown and changed. I mean, with Pluto going through your first house, there's been a ton of growth over many, many years for you. And it might be that you're ready to step into a new position of authority in, in your work, for example, you know, and, but yet with Libra rising there, I mean, sorry, with Libra, excuse me, in the 10th house, there might be this tendency to be like, oh, like I'm, I'm not really going to ask for that. I, I don't want to piss the boss off and I'm going to be a little more meek, you know, and that is, you know, so it can be challenging. And so this time is really bringing that up. Is there a way in which you're kind of giving away what you really have to offer to this profession because you, you're you nervous about speaking up? You're nervous about taking that authority because you've got Libra in the 10th house, you know? So there's something about that. Like, is, is there a conversation you're avoiding about a raise you need to get? 
yeah. you know, um, that you've been overlooked. Like, and, and this is a real time to think, you know what? I need a new contract. I'm not, you know, content with how this is. This needs to be shifted, you know? And the, the Pluto in the first house is sort of saying, you've done so much work to get to this point of being the authority. So it is not about trying to prove you're the authority. Like you've already done it. You've already done the work. This is about, I mean, it's funny because the word diplomacy comes to mind. Like if you, let's say you do want a raise or, you know, a new position in your company, it's like, yes, you do need to be diplomatic. You don't want to come in like, I'm the best. I know everything, you know? No, you, you need to be diplomatic, but you just want to make sure you're not, and giving away too much power and being too meek about what you really need and what you can bring, quite frankly, to the whole place that you work, you know, and therefore the world. So, yeah. 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 The the whole area of your career and those relationships within that career, um, there's just an element here where you need to step back and think about what's fair hmm. you know is, is the contract the current karmic contract fair because there's a real demand here to get that contract to a point where it is fair mm -hmm. there's a real issue of fairness here but yeah it's really simple like you said yeah. when there's <laughs> cardinal um signs on these angular houses there's a real simplicity about it it's a karmic contract with people in authority and you've got a lot of power yourself and there's a little bit of a conflict there to get those two aligned so if you've got capricorn rising and you're dealing with this stuff you probably know what the story is that you're dealing with please leave us a message in in the um, comments below we would love to hear how this is playing out for those of you that are listening to us. And with that being said, let's move on to Aquarius rising. Yeah, so with Aquarius rising, this solar eclipse is happening in your ninth house. Um, so the ninth house in a word means your worldview. Um, but there's a real implication here about how you acquire that worldview throughout your life. And you do it by having experiences. Maybe you get to travel to foreign lands and it opens up your mind. Or maybe you were lucky enough to go to college and you got a great education and that opened your mind. Or, you know, there's many other ways to get this kind of mind opening piece. I mean, for some people, it's religion. You know, for some people, it's, you know, might even happen through an intense legal issue, we'll say, because that's mm -hmm. another thing that can happen in the ninth house. But at any rate, this place has been holding your attention for at least the last few weeks, um, as you kind of grapple with where do my worldviews come from? You know, like, am I just taking on other people's worldview because I have Libra here and it's just easy for me to kind of take on other people's points of views, you know, or, you know, or, or what, you know, or is there something that um, some piece of my education that I've been avoiding that I'm now ready to take on that I need a new contract in the way that I am thinking about the world, because that is what the solar eclipse really brings in. You know, it's this opportunity to say, hey, I've been doing things a certain way for a long time, and now we're making a pivot point at this eclipse, um, and I need a new contract. I have a new, I'm a new person, I have a new viewpoint, um, and that needs to be part of what I'm doing. And so if you are embarking upon some sort of learning adventure, you want to make sure that suits you, that it meets the growth that you've already had, you know, that it really is something that works for you. Um, so those are some of the themes that it brings up for me, you know? Yeah, it could also, it, that worldview, I love that ninth house. It's just so interesting to think about all the ways that our minds really do open and expand and take in a, a broader understanding of the larger issues of the world. And, you know, you mentioned education and travel and religion and politics. Can We can throw politics in there as well. All of these things. Well, yeah, I mean, politics can also shut down our minds, but that's another conversation altogether. Um, this, this area can also, because it's Libra, so we're thinking of relationships as well. It can also really hold... Um, teachers 
teachers are a ninth house thing, publishers. Um, so, you know, there may be relationships with teachers or religious leaders that may be part of the uh, karmic contracts that need to be reset. Uh, but yeah, like you said, you've been through a lot of changes with the Venus retrograde, your view of the world, your understanding has been through a lot of changes. And yeah, since Libra season as well, and there's more to come, but this period of time is a changing of the contract and the changing of the contract um, then sets up the future growth. Mm. You know, mm -hmm. you can't stay under the same contract and expect anything to change. So this is a time of changing that karmic contract. And with Pluto in the 12th house, where's the stress point? How, how would you think of this as the stress on that changing that contract? Right. I know it's almost like there's um this process that's happening way underneath the surface, a psychological process that you may not be fully aware of. I mean, Pluto has been in your 12th house for years since 2008, you know, so there's some kind of deeper, I think of this as like tectonic plates, you mm. know, the consonants, like an underneath, there's all this moving that, you know, and it's not until they really collide that you see this massive effect, you know, so it's got a little bit of that feeling to it. Like, that this is something that you've been working on for years and you don't have control over the nitty gritty, like, oh, today I'm going to behave like this. Like, no, 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 no. This is a much longer, deeper process with Pluto going through that 12th house. So there's something about that that is um, really exerting pressure on your worldview. You know, mm -hmm. something new has come to light about the way you conduct yourself um, as, as you go through life. So, you know, it, it's really massive force. That's what I think of these massive forces behind the scenes. Yeah, that, um, yeah, that feels really big. It feels like, yeah, there's some unconscious big issue that maybe does not want you mm -hmm. to change this contract yeah um so there could be some it could really feel like a very very deep internal battle to allow yourself to get that contract so yeah yeah um work yeah. with that work with that yeah, because I mean, it definitely just bear in mind, like, so Pluto brings in control issues. So it could be, you know, on one hand, you're trying to control too tightly your own psychological processes. Mm -hmm. But the reality is, there's a large part of all of us humans that is unconscious, you know, and, and it's part of it. It's we we're always going to be partly unconscious, you know, and there's amazing things that come out of that, your intuition, your gut feelings, you know, all of these, the, this knowledge that arrives in your head, and you don't know where it came from, you know, those are 12th house issues. So there's a lot of um, yeah, it, hidden from view, shifting, but but with major effect for those of you with Aquarius rising. So yeah, yeah. So um, leave us notes in the comments if you know how this is playing out for you, and you'd like to share with us. We'd love to hear how this is playing out in your life, and we do our best to reply to comments. So we'd love to hear from you. Nice. Um, okay, now let's move on to whoops. I got to do something before I can move on here. All right, let's move on to those of you with Pisces rising. So this puts the Libra new moon solar eclipse into your eighth house. And we're thinking about karmic contracts. Now, it's, it's interesting because the eighth house is such a deep, intense house. And what does it um, relate to? The eighth house relates to our, it relates to how we navigate other people's deep, intense issues. So there's something in how we navigate ourselves in the face of other people's issues that has to be renegotiated renavigated we're looking for resetting the karmic contract with other people I, I i'm getting a little twisted here it's like 
I think of the eighth house as how we navigate ourselves in the face of others. So yeah. would this be resetting our karmic contract with how we navigate other people? Or yeah. is it <laughs> navigating the karmic contracts with those other people who we have to navigate that stuff with? It might be both. <laughs> I think, well, I think the important thing is for anyone with Pisces rising, think about where are you bumping up against other people's stuff? Right. Feel difficult. And, you know, and like, uh, like what's happening? And then use the Libra keywords, right? To kind of work with it. Like, are you one of those people? Do you kind of like try to over please and assuage people and ingratiate yourself? with people when they come at you with their intense stuff? Is it where you kind of like manage it and make it okay, you know? I mean, I think it's tough having Libra in the eighth house. Don't well, you I don't know. It's interesting. Because Helpful sometimes, a tough other time. It can be, it can be, um, I, I think a lot of people with Pisces rising, I, I've talked to a lot of people with Pisces rising who are therapists. And mm -hmm. one of their great gifts is that they can show up in the therapy room and not be judgmental about other people's stuff. Right. And that's a great gift for people with Libra in that eighth house is that ability to be diplomatic around how you approach, um, how you can kind of sit there and listen to stories that may be horrifying and just, you know, maintain yourself in that in that space and be able to work with that. Um, but right now there's something in it. I think it's something in how you have navigated those relationships that needs a reset. I agree. Yeah. You know, you've kind of overdone it there. You know, <laughs> maybe you find yourself um, being all diplomatic with someone in your life who has really gone over the line and you know you yeah you should be horrified or or what you know whatever it is mm -hmm. you know so it it's time to really consider what your karmic agreement is with those people that you encounter in that deep eighth house place. You know, the other thing about the eighth house, it can be shared resources, shared money. So this could involve um, people who, yeah, who you share money with, people who you expect to inherit a lot of money from. That could be another relationship that's part of this maybe there is a karmic contract around inheritance of some sort whether it be financial inheritance or otherwise there may be some some karmic contract there that has to be changed um removed in order for a new contract to be written there what do you think about that jenny yeah i think that's a really important way to think about, you know, just the other people's values, other people's money, you know, coming in at you. And, you know, the eighth house is always tricky to talk about because it's, it's another one that's hidden from view. It's tucked away. It's kind of, it's got its relationship to the 12th house, you know, where it's kind of hidden and not always readily obvious, you know, but I think that one of the other, I mean, we're really talking about cautionary tales during the solar eclipse um, just because that that's where the work is and you're trying to do something new. So you need to close the door on old behaviors yeah. and another old behavior you might really need to deal with is like, is avoiding things, you know, avoiding the difficult conversations, avoiding the need to set boundaries with people and maybe just sort of leaving the room mm -hmm. instead of like standing and holding a line the way you need to. So I think that's what, you know, as Pisces rising, you know, that you really want to reflect on where do you give up your power? Because that's what you're doing with the eighth house. If you're not, you know, if you're avoiding or over pleasing and, that, and that's really what we're trying to hone in on, you know, um, that's what I think about that, you know, and then there's also the, the Pluto, the sticky. Yeah. There's Pluto. <laughs> yeah. So, so, I mean, yeah, well, go ahead, Lori. Yeah. Well, yeah, I don't know. It, it's interesting to think that where Pluto is right now, it's been for a very, very long time. There's some power dynamic coming from 
community from where you receive support, possibly um, some way in which the community that supports you is not necessarily supporting this need for you to change this dynamic in how you navigate other people's stuff. Yeah. I mean, it's, uh, yeah, exactly. And it's like, it's a place of control, right? So it might be that there's some way in which the community you're part of is very much trying to control how you work with these other issues with these difficult people, you know, and, and that might be something that, you know, where you feel a sense of like, oh, like this community that I'm part of is trying to control me, you know, and I, and I, I, I want something different with these people. So I have these funny ideas or they're not really funny, but I, as you're talking, I'm thinking, oh, well, maybe, you know, this is a power coming from a cult that is trying to control what you do with your inheritance. <laughs> well, I keep thinking about politicians with this, actually. Oh, interesting. You know, like the the idea that you're part of a political party, which is the 11th house, and you're supposed to do things a certain way, but you want to handle these difficult issues like in a way that doesn't go with the party that you're part of, you know? So yeah. I, that's for some reason that came to mind, um, you know, just this yeah. of like some way in which you feel controlled or you're, you know, trying to control the community by saying, no, we're going to do it this other way now. And they're sort of going, what, you know? And so that's where the work is. You have to let go of that control issue and really buckle down to work with the boundary issue, you know? Yeah. That. Yeah. Bottom line, your karmic contract is around the boundaries that you've set in these deep, powerful relationships. Yeah. Right. I mean, that that karmic contract reset is about boundaries, changing the boundaries that you have to the ones that you need to have. Yeah. OK, so I think that covers those with Pisces. Oh, that was Pisces. That's the end of the line here. Yeah. I didn't even realize I, I was ready to keep going. So for those of you with Pisces rising, if this speaks to you or you have any story to tell about this, please leave notes in the comments below. We would love to hear how this is playing out for you or how you expect this to play out for you or what you're thinking about or whatever. Leave comments. We will do our best to reply to them. Yeah. And okay. I think we're done. Okay. Well, thank you, everyone. If anyone's still listening, thank you. And we'll be back again soon. Thanks, Lori. Thanks, Jenny.